la la. That's <laughs> crazy. I gotta stop drinking that cat piss coffee, man. That stuff will wind you up. It'll kick you right in the gonads and uh, sit on your face. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna show you. This is a really complicated one, too. But I swear to God, there must be nobody on YouTube that's made a video about this. A real professional photography technique for umbrella use, and it is really difficult. It's going to take you five seconds to learn how to use this. Now, typically, when you open up your umbrella, either indoors or outdoors, you got, got a gigantic wash of light. It's just uh, kind of like uh, the clouds opening up and dumping a lot of light on your subject's head. And there are many options for snoots and uh, obviously for honeycombs on a studio strobe where you can actually control the light to a narrow corridor to give a spotlight illumination just kind of like an actor on a stage will actually bring a spotlight in and some fat ugly chick starts singing and everything else gets drowned out because there's a single spotlight this is really important uh, depending on your composition out in the field but how do you achieve that with an umbrella i mean you open up an umbrella and you stick um, one of your little Photox adapters here with a uh, Nikon speed light or whatever that's pointing in the umbrella. It doesn't matter where you place this, either near or far. Generally speaking, you got a oh, wham! You got to blast the light, right? This is a trick that, and it's not really a trick, but I swear some of the simplest stuff in professional photography just like goes unknown on YouTube. And uh, th what do you do? How can you do that with an umbrella? Well, you know, you're not going to get it opening it up. Well, how do you do it with an umbrella? I mean, I've got a speed light here, and it doesn't matter where I put it, I'm going to get a flood of light. So you got someone sitting on a bench or someone, a little child sitting out in the field in the dusk. And you have uh, your speed light and your umbrella just out of, uh, out of the crop of the shot that you're taking. You don't want to blast the whole air with light. It does cause conversational conversational issue, and it gives you a better dynamic range if you're actually able to narrow it down. Well, instead of using a grid, instead of uh, using uh, a, like a straw snoot or uh, just a regular snoot on your speed light, which is actually too narrow, you can actually give an uneven, uh, diffuse uh, spotlight effect to whatever it is you're shooting, and that's really important because light modification is incredibly important. And uh, if you got one tool that can do more than one thing, that's always the tits on location. That just means it's less friggin' gear you got to haul. And the trick is, is that you can take your umbrella. It doesn't matter if it's here. It seems kind of narrow, right? Well, you can place your speed light down here. You can point it in. Not a problem. Right about here, just enough to catch the light. You use this magical stuff called duct tape, okay? And then what you do is, so it won't slide up or down. I'm going to blaze it right, y'all. Yeah like this and then well I want it a little bit lower than that that's about right you get a nice confinement to whatever it is you want to illuminate very very handy it's used quite often I don't know why it's a, a, a trick that more people don't use but if you have it like this on your subject you illuminate just a certain portion or you can actually give specular definition to your subject without having too much wraparound light or having to add negative fill to the side of someone's face. Usually you open up an umbrella, you've got so much coverage blasting and wrapping around your subject that you have uh, no definition. You have basically zero contrast between your specular diffuse and the shadows are basically non-existent, even if you place it close. But with this, I can actually use this as a definer of the light of my subject. And uh, it's uh, very handy. I actually placed that a little too close. I wanted to place it down a little bit further. But anyway, that's the trick. Let me take the tape off here. There we go. And that's about as uh, right about there. You see what we have here? This is more than enough. And all these little uh, uneven edges, you, you won't see that in the shot. But it'll give your uh, subject strong definition such you can actually define the specular, the diffuse, the midtones, or, and or, give a subject isolation to the illumination of what you're trying to do. Like if you're taking a wide angle shot outdoors, you place this uh, outside of the subject. If you open up this umbrella with like a, a 35 millimeter shot, 
I like say someone sitting in a park bench or someone out in the field and this is outside the field of view of a 35 millimeter and you're not going to crop it heavily with this umbrella open it's just going to blast light all over the place and it's going to leave some nasty vignetting due to the fact that you know you got a 35 millimeter shot I want to take a nice wide angle shot but you know I want something wide enough the snoot isn't going to be wide enough and uh, you know unless I bring a bunch of damn photo gear a pile of photo gear right with me I can't achieve it but you can by taping off your uh, umbrella shaft at about this rate or wherever you need to place it the for effect for the composition that you want because I'm people that, that bitch about umbrellas for the very reason that I'm showing this to you it's like well you know open up an umbrella it just went wham you know, I don't get enough light control, and light control is incredibly important. But who says you got to open the umbrella up all the way? Um, you'll see, actually, a lot of professionals actually do that. It's just because you got an umbrella doesn't mean you need to open it up all the way. You get a really neat effect doing this. So try it. It works really well. And uh, I learned this trick from I don't know if his name was Stephen Butcher back in photography school. I was like, wow, that's really neat. He showed us the effect. He actually did a model shoot at Ormond Beach. We went to Ormond Beach to do a model shoot of a hot blonde chick. I've got black and white negatives in some drawer that I actually... He brought six of us out there at uh, dawn to do an early morning shoot at Ormond Beach at this rich dude's house. And they were shooting this blonde chick wearing like a white, uh, white linen outfit on the beach of Ormond Beach, just north of Daytona Beach, where I was living at at the time while going to the school so anyway I think that's the first person to mention it on YouTube I am and uh, try it out it works perfectly and uh, it's not like a trick or a gimmick it's uh, something professionals have been doing now for decades but it seems to be like forgotten thanks for watching I'll catch you later as always we'll the Russians